Welcome to Spot Trading Live with Income Strategies. Thank you for joining. If you're watching, thank you so much for joining. And if you're watching the replay, you're welcome, welcome, welcome. Please say hi in the comments and let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're watching from. That will be so good to know. All right. So what are we doing today? We're going to be doing some good spot trading activities across four different platforms. Yes, you heard me right. All right. So without much ado, let's go into what we have for us today. So as you can see here, we have $350 that we'll be working with on Binance. Let's start with our all-time favorite, which is Binance. Okay, let's go ahead and now. Now, for our spot trading, I love to use gainers, right? And you can use any of these, right? You can use gainers. You can, let me just enlarge this. You can use gainers. You can use losers. You can use new listings. But my all-time best is gainers. And the reason being that... The reason why I like to use gainers, and let me show you this, is because when a coin is pumping, there is a more likelihood that it will continue to pump at least for another 24 hours. The reason being that when a coin is in pump mode, like someone asked me, what do you want? What do you mean by pump mode? I'll explain that in a bit, right? When a coin is in pump mode, take a look at this. Don't forget that this is a trading session right and we're also having a tutorial alongside with it now look at this right when you see that a coin is already plus 31.21 percent it means that at least in the next 24 and this was just within the 24 hours within the 24 hours you know f uh, time frame it means that at least it would not fall below 15 percent reason being that there's no way within the next 24 hours that it will totally go flat no it will still be in the rise, but it may not rise as much as 31%, right? So I need you to understand that when coins are in pump mode, remember that, especially when we have really nice ones, you know, 31%, 20%, 15%, and there's anything in the range of 10% above, it will naturally, right, still keep that rise within the next 24 hours. Now, I know that there are quite a number of, you know, opinions, and the same thing cuts across. I'm going to explain this out one more time so that we understand it, right? Take a look at it. I, I, I'm just going to repeat this one more time for those of us that just joined us, right? Now, if you're using gainers, let me explain. Let me show you this very clearly. Now, if you're using gainers, right? And take, for example, which of these coins is this? Let's see that cyber. Wow, that's interesting. I haven't seen that one before. All right. So let's say you're using cyber. Cyber rose up like 31% within the last 24 hours. It, in the next 24 hours, it wouldn't go below 15%. Now, I'm sure I, I know there's some rare situations, right, that people with deep pockets will come around and just sell off. Or maybe people that want to sell off their portfolio and then it will now dump the price. It's possible. But that's a very rare situation. OK, that's like it's not like the norm. The norm is that if it's 31 percent, it wouldn't drop below 15 percent within the next 24 hours. That is the point I'm trying to make here. Now, another thing that could happen, which people tend to say is that, oh, when it's already in pump mode, it's about to switch. Yes, you're not too far from the truth, but that's why you need to be able to look at the technical analysis very well and make your good choices. But the first thing that you must look at is the fact that gainers will naturally still rise, okay? Losers will still lose. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. Losers will still lose, and that's the truth. You cannot take it. Yeah, even though the plan is that when you go to losers, people say, oh, if you're in losers, it's gotten to the bottom. It's gotten to the bottom. So maybe in a few moments, it's going to switch it up. It's just a probability. That's the truth. It's a probability. It might not switch. It may still go down. I've tested it out. I've seen a couple. I've seen it happen like that. You know, you may think that, oh, it's going to switch, it's going to switch. My dear, it might not always switch. It might still go down. That's the reason why I'm still talking about gainers. Now, what about new listings? The concept behind new listings, and which you need to understand, is that when a coin is newly listed, right, it has the propensity to have a lot of volatility. That's it. Now, take a good look at this. This NTR, it was still new like last week, yeah, because it's just about like not even up to a month old, right? The truth is, it will definitely be on top because it's one of the newest one and has the most volatility. 
Volatility has to do with movement. Let me just check that out for you so you can understand what I'm saying. So volatility means that it's going up, it's going down, right? It's quite risky in the sense that a new coin, any new coin is risky, right? Any new coin is risky. And when there's volatility, if you check the order book, you will see it should have movement, right? I'm not seeing too much of movement in this one, but I mean, a new listing is supposed to have movement. People are buying and selling because it's a new coin, right? That means they've done a lot of marketing. People are interested in buying the coin, even though I'm not seeing much of, you know, I'm not seeing much of, um, velocity and volatility in the price but anyways that's the concept behind new listings that if it's new it should right go ahead and still give you the new vibes and people will still want to buy them and you know so many so that's the concept behind choosing either gainers choosing losers or choosing you know new, new listings but i'm gonna go with gainers right i'm going with gainers the reason why i love to go with gainers is because at least um, I can be not like as if I'm so sure, but at least coupled with technical analysis, I should be able to get. So let's go ahead. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So I'm going to be choosing um, any coin that I see that fits my budget. Like, don't forget, we have like about $440 that we're going to be working around with, right? But I'm not going to be putting all of that amount one in one fell swoop. I don't do that. I love to share my trades across. Reason being that you don't want to put your eggs in one basket. Please don't do that. If you have $1,000, share it into like $200 in five places. It's okay, right? You have $5,000, make sure you could do like maybe five trades, $1,000 each. Don't put that entire $5,000 into just one trade. It could be trapped for some time. You don't want to be under that kind of pressure, okay? So let's go ahead. Just make sure that you learn step-by-step step what I'm teaching you here. So let's go ahead and see.